Oh. All right, folks, welcome to the Zoom 101 webinar. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but this is about as real as it gets. Welcome to your next few months. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and record this call so that we can put it on our website. We'll get through some quick intros and we're going to roll into the reason that you're here and get you all using Zoom 101 at a level slightly higher than maybe I'm using it right now. Apologies again. So we're going to go ahead and record. So welcome to the Grassroots Advancement Program's Zoom 101 webinar. My name is Andres Esparza here with the Conservation Lands Foundation and I'm joined by Jim Stanger from Friends of Sloan Canyon, internet and tech expert. Again, sorry for the delay. Uh, there was an issue with the waiting room that we had to resolve, but we're all here. We're recording this for our website and all of you are here because you want to learn how to use Zoom more effectively in your organizations. Again, the title, Zoom 101, Pivoting to More Digital Engagement. Um, first off, I just want to start by saying I hope everybody, whoever is on this and is listening to this in the next few months, I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you're safe and healthy. And whether it's work related or not, I'm always here to chat. You can email me, call me. You have my contact information. Please reach out. We want to support both in these technical organizational resources, but also personally if we can. So be safe, everybody. We're, we've got this webinar together last minute because we realized that in this kind of uncertain time when a lot of us are working from home, and we are having to pivot to more digital engagement, whether it's using resources like this to connect with coworkers or community members, connecting with family over Zoom, or just figuring out how to stay connected as an organization. Um, a lot of us have jumped to Zoom or many similar software platforms to connect, see each other, share screens, and continue to do the good work that we need to do, especially thinking about our public lands conservation work um, the work doesn't stop because we're in a pandemic. In a lot of ways, our work just got a little bit harder, maybe adding to a little bit of stress. And our goal is to make Zoom and other software like this a little less mysterious, a little bit easier to use so that we can do the work that we need to do. We also fully realize that there is a lot going on in the world right now. And if land advocacy is not your number one priority, we get it. That's totally fine. But our hope is that coming out on the other end of this, which we will, that we used this time to gain some skills. And I think digital advocacy and the ability to use platforms like Zoom set us up so that when we emerge on the other end, we have another skill in our toolbox. And when we emerge on the other end, we are more connected than before. Because like I said, the work doesn't stop. We just might be on a slight pause right now. Now, some of the goals for this webinar before I turn it over to Jim Stanger, are very basic. What is Zoom? How do you create accounts? How do you set up a meeting? How do you share your screen? And a few best practices. We have an hour and a half for this. Uh, we may use that whole time. We may cut it a little bit short. Um, we may dive into some other topics down the road. Um, in addition to this recorded webinar, which will go on our website, for the next two Wednesdays at the same time, noon to one, uh, Jim Stanger has offered Zoom happy hour where you can log in, ask questions in real time. Um, and if you're working on some of those more advanced skills or had some questions, Jim has offered his time to you. So if we don't get to your questions this time, or if you think of one next week, log back in, we'll be here to join you. Uh, a couple of quick things. I have muted everybody upon entry. General best practice, especially when you have more than you know 10 people. Um, it's very easy to unmute yourself at the control panel at the bottom, which Jim will run through. Uh, for this conversation in this webinar as well, there's a chat box, which is going to be very helpful. If you have questions, that'll be a really good way to curate our questions so we can get to them. It's also a great way to reach out to each other privately or as a group. And then finally, we have a raise your hand feature, which is very handy because it lets us know somebody needs to be off mute. Um, often it's when you have a much larger, longer question or more specifics than a person wants to type out. All right, for now, I'm going to sit back. I am going to turn this over to Jim 
um, who is going to go ahead and walk us through a lot of the basics. I'll be here throughout. You can chat with me privately with the group and I'll jump on every so often, but I'll jump on mainly at the end. For now, Jim, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Andres. So hi, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Jim Stanger. I'm the board president of Friends of Sloan Canyon. Uh, I won't go into the whole spiel for us because we're all kind of friends groups. We all, we all know what each other do in general. So won't spend a lot of time there. But uh, in a prior life, I uh, was, I spent a lot, my first half of my career as a IT professional, uh, doing a lot of nerdy uh, server stuff, uh, system administration, things like that. Uh, when I realized that that was, that wasn't exciting to me anymore, I pivoted a little bit and started doing uh, online training for folks. I uh, uh, hired on with a Australian startup that provided um, experience-based uh, software or software for uh, people that are uh, tour and activity operators. And I, uh, in, in doing that, I became a manager of a training group. Uh, so when so somebody signs up for the software, they uh, are automatically uh, scheduled for a uh, one hour training by me or somebody on my team. And this was back in 2015, 2016. Uh, that's when I first glommed onto this tool, Zoom. Um, you know, before tools like Zoom or other uh, teleconferencing software, like you know FaceTime or Microsoft Teams, uh, doing webinars, doing teleconferencing was kind of tough and required a nerd to do, you know, to be around and to set up expensive equipment. Uh, so, you know, luckily in the past couple of years and with the challenges we're facing today, uh, that sort of teleconferencing, remote conferencing with folks is much easier these days. Uh, because of our new strange situation we find ourselves in, uh, where a lot of us are uh, doing uh, teleconferencing uh, meetings with not just with our board members now, or maybe desire to uh, still engage with our board members, engage with our constituencies, with our with the community, do community outreach, um, but just connect with family and friends, uh, colleagues. You know, we're all kind of holed up in our in our homes, uh, hopefully, and and uh, writing it out and flattening the curve. So uh, there's plenty of opportunities, I think, to use tools like this uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, if you haven't. Uh, used uh, Zoom or tools like this before, and if you're in here, and most likely you have uh, don't have a lot of experience with this, I'll go through uh, and spend the next 45 minutes or so and sort of go through, uh, you know, the basics of of this tool, Zoom, uh, which just seems to be the the, the the tool that everybody's glommed onto in the past few weeks, uh, and show you how to set it up, how to host a meeting. It's very easy to participate in a meeting. Except for today, I apologize. I think there's a bug in the system that kept everybody in the waiting room a little too long. Uh, yeah, but uh, it'll be interesting as we walk through to see if that uh, replicates itself. But uh, uh, you know, joining a meeting, not too hard. Uh, it's, usually it's a press of a button. Hosting meeting is a whole different creature. It's a lot more to pay attention to, a lot more, a little more planning that goes into it and some uh, good best practices to use that I'll go over today. Anyways, I'm going to switch to uh, another desktop and just show you a uh, uh, desktop view. There we go. So I'm logged into another laptop of mine. Uh, it's very, it's, you know, without uh, doing it this way, it's hard to show people over Zoom how to use Zoom, uh, what the hosting interface likes, is like. So I went ahead and logged into this other computer. Uh, this is actually, shouldn't be logged in yet. There we go. Um, let's see, accessing Zoom. So, hey, this is my group. There we go. Okay, Zoom.us is the, um, the website address for Zoom. I'm gonna we're gonna you know this is called Zoom 101. I'm gonna focus on Zoom, but a lot of these uh, workflows apply to uh, other tools that you may have available to you, uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Jitsi, there's a, there's a number of, of these tools that are popping up now, especially now that the world is glomming on to, uh, to remote conferencing. Uh, for Zoom, I'm going to zoom.us. There's the page. There's a, uh, I'd recommend uh, signing up for an account. Uh, the accounts are free. Uh, there's a couple of limitations when you sign up for a free account. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but just to show you real quick. No, okay. You know, they're gonna make us jump through, uh, jump through a couple hoops. Um, how about this? It's you know signing up for an account is pretty much like signing up for anything. You give them your name, address, uh, email address, rather, 
and sign up, verify your email address, and then you're in. Uh, yeah, the, for downloading the client itself, the software, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, you can click here on join a meeting. And I'll go back to the home page for this. You can click on join a meeting. Uh, even though you're not joining anything, it's still going to prompt you to download the software. You can also scroll to the very bottom, and there is a download menu. You'd, uh, if you're on a desktop uh, or a laptop computer, you'll want to click on the first one that says, want to download the meeting client. That'll download the software, install it. It's a quick download. It's a quick install. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't last too long. I went ahead and signed up for an account already. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Uh, nope, that's not the one I'm using. Yeah, it is actually. And my super secret uh, password, Godzilla, one, two, three. There we go. Okay, Zoom has gotten so popular that a lot of these messages are coming up. <laughs> They're going through growing pains. Quick little nerdy fact while I, uh, before I dive into the interface here, uh, Zoom, this tool is uh, at around the beginning of the year, it was used by about 10 million people on a regular basis. Now it's being used by 200 million people. So if you, uh, if you know, this webinar isn't the first time you've heard of Zoom, there's very good reason for it. Everybody's talking about it. Anyway, so I'm logged into a user account. Um, I've got, uh, there's a couple different things to keep a track of for Zoom. One is personal information and one is account information. So if it's just, if, you, if you're going to be the only host, if you want to host a Zoom meeting and it's just going to be you that's doing the, the, the legwork, the hosting, you can uh, pay attention to the stuff right on the front here. Uh, you have a personal meeting ID. Uh, this is uh, personal for your user. Uh, you can also create a meeting that creates uh, a random number as well. I would give out this number, consider this like your email address or maybe your phone number. I would give it out to people who you're gonna communicate with on a regular basis and who may uh, not, uh, are probably not likely to jump in at any time or try to connect with you with that number while you're in a, talking to another party. Uh, if you're uh, hosting a meeting for uh, strangers or members of the community, people you don't often talk to, you can generate a random uh, meeting ID that would get out there and that way it's, it's a, it's a one-use only meeting ID. Uh, I would, uh, let's see, on the side here, so there's a lot of uh, configuration options. There's only a few you really need to uh, keep track of in the beginning. Uh, we're gonna go to meetings. I have one scheduled already. We'll talk about that in a bit. Oh, they've been configuring a lot recently. Uh, account management, here we go. Nope. Pardon me. Here, Ooh, okay, settings. <laughs> I've been using a lot of these tools. Uh, recently, and I've got a little mixed up. Okay, so under the personal area, go to settings, and these are some general uh, default configuration settings you can set for any meeting. Uh, things from, and uh, there are a couple key settings that are turned on by default, especially after the last couple weeks, there's been a lot of positive press that uh, Zoom has generated. There's also been a lot of negative press at, uh, with, uh, with Zoom in mind, people talking about security. Uh, you may have heard of a term, a term called Zoom bombing, where, uh, uh, Bad actors, kids with a lot of free time on, on, on their hands now, will hunt down public Zoom uh, login uh, IDs and, and uh, jump themselves into a meeting and wreck a bunch of havoc. Uh, racial slurs, weird pictures, just yelling, you know, things like that. So there are some things that uh, Zoom has turned on by default that uh, can uh, help mitigate that. Uh, one of which you were in, you were, uh, when you logged into Zoom, you were placed in a, in a waiting room. Uh, you weren't automatically uh, in the party with everybody. Uh, so you're also probably prompted to put in a password. That's another good uh, security feature. And those are all sort of turned by, not by default. Require a password when scheduling new meetings. Uh, require a password for, in, uh, for instant meetings. Unless you are going to be meeting with a couple parties, you know, small 
a couple of people you know well, or people that you know, um, or, or you know, the meeting isn't going to be published anywhere, the meeting ID, then uh, you can go ahead. I'd recommend keeping these on. If it's going to be just a small party, uh, you can go ahead and turn them off. I mean, if it's, uh, or you're dealing with somebody that, that maybe is intimidated by technology or doesn't want to, they might have a problem entering password information or what do I do when I get to the waiting room? I mean, there's a lot of folks we deal with that where this is, uh, you know, tools like this aren't brand new, but sort of technology is something that they have trouble with. So uh, in instances like that, wherever possible, you can make it as easy for them to participate as possible. Uh, but where there are opportunities to build in more security, I would, uh, I would highly recommend that to keep uh, rascals from joining in. Uh, let's see, other things that would be worth after you uh, sign in to, uh, to go through and, and see if they make sense to you. Uh, you can mute participants upon entry. Uh, in a uh, presentation environment, if you're doing something uh, like tonight, I'm hosting a presentation. A wildlife biologist is going to talk about bighorn sheep, desert bighorn sheep and, and water guzzlers, things like that. Uh, if I was doing that over Zoom, I would, um, and there, I knew that there were 30, 40, 50 people or more that were going to be joining in, uh, then I would mute everybody uh, you know, when they enter. That way, every, that way, there's no cacophony when people come in and say hi and, and their names. So when there's small meetings, uh, uh, you know, or, or we do these calls with the Friends Grassroots Network, and we take time to introduce ourselves and, uh, and chat a little bit, uh, you know, you can keep that off. But if it's a big... Uh, presentation where you need to sort of control the room, uh, manage the room a little bit more, uh, then you can go ahead and mute folks upon entry. Uh, and then a number of other things uh, you can, uh, you know, kill chat if you need to. You can, uh, um, let's see, what else is uh, very important, sharing. So I'm going to be, right now I'm sharing my screen. And I'm not sure if Andres uh, configured the meeting so that anybody can share their screen. But again, uh, it's a security feature that would keep uh, uh, bad actors from ruining the show. As you can say, you know what? Only the host can uh, share a screen. Um, in fact, we're going to set it to that right now. Screen sharing is very, I'll go through some of the screen sharing options. Screen sharing itself is very valuable. Um, unless you're just doing a face-to-face, -face, a lot of you know Zoom happy hours uh, I've had with my friends and family, or we're all... Uh, uh, you know, sort of cocktail hour and chatting with each other. Uh, when we don't do a lot of screen sharing then, but uh, if you're doing a presentation, if uh, somebody's showing a PowerPoint online or you want to uh, use collaborative features, you want to activate screen sharing. And a lot of other stuff. That's, that's the, you know, those are the basic screen sharing, passwords, waiting room are the, uh, are the uh, things that you want to uh, sort of get a handle on immediately before you start your first, before you host your first meeting. From here, we're going to go to the client itself. I'm going to take a little break. Does anybody have any questions so far? I need to, uh, I haven't been paying attention to Zoom or the, uh, the webinar. Jim, uh, we, Zoom. Had, yes. um, we had one question, and it, I think it's something that's going to be a little bit more in depth, but um, some folks in the past have blocked their cameras on their laptops for security reasons uh, within their own system. And so Zoom can't access the cameras. I imagine this might come up as more folks are, are needing the camera. Um, but this also might be a case by case, depending on what machine you're on and what the setting looks like on your personal laptop. Um, yes. Because if it's blocked on the laptop, you won't be able to allow Zoom to just automatically use your camera. So if you have any specific questions that are more related to your particular device, uh, we'll save those and maybe we can get to those on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, but just let folks know that, you know, if they're concerned about their camera, often they can just put a little piece of paper that hangs over it if they have a concern. But in these times, it's going to be pretty helpful to have access to that camera on a regular basis or else we're not going to see each other's faces. Exactly. In fact, there are a lot of laptops that have a little switch now, a little mechanical switch that you can uh, you can cover it with. Uh, again, we live in interesting times, even before the pandemic. So, uh, yeah, and I'll actually I will talk about that in just a minute. Uh, planning uh, is a lot more than just scheduling an event. It's also uh, doing sound and video checks also. So I brought up the Zoom uh, client here. It's, uh, it's not a very complicated interface, just a couple of big buttons. I want to start a meeting, I want to join a meeting, I want to schedule a meeting, and I want to 
share something. You can set up screen sharing before you turn, uh, before you start a meeting. I have uh, something scheduled already. Uh, I live in Las Vegas, so a lot of my examples are Area 51 related. Uh, let's see, uh, things you want to do immediately is when you start the client, uh, and Andres just, uh, that question just uh, dived nicely into this, is you want to go up here to this little gear icon in the upper right hand corner and look at your settings. Uh, you have, there we go. So I, again, I'm looking at a different the, uh, laptop I'm using to uh, show the hosting interface is sitting right next to me. So uh, you go to settings, you want to make sure that your webcam is going to work. Uh, if, we're, if you click on video and you don't see anything here, uh, there's some troubleshooting you can do. You, know, you want to take a look at the, uh, at the interface down here. Uh, um, worst case scenario, you can click on this troubleshooting link and I think it opens up Microsoft or it, or it will give you more tips uh, or uh, sort of take you down into the, uh, how the operating system manages the webcam. And uh, maybe you have it turned off, maybe it's turned off you know, deeper than, than your controls can handle. I don't know. It sort of depends on, on the hardware you're using. Uh, but well before you're, uh, you're gonna be hosting your first meeting, make sure your webcam is working, make sure your audio is working. Uh, I'm just using uh, system audio for this. In fact, I should probably turn some of these down or else uh, once I start doing, uh, hosting one myself, there's gonna be some audio feedback. But again, this is where you can choose. You can uh, say, okay, I don't wanna use my speaker. Maybe I wanna use headphones. Maybe I wanna use uh, earbuds like I'm using, uh, Bluetooth earbuds. You can choose those here uh, for, for the speaker, uh, for the output, and then the audio input. Same thing, you can, uh, some folks uh, have more than one mic. Maybe you don't wanna use your laptop or your computer's onboard microphone. Maybe you wanna use a USB microphone uh, so that uh, whatever you have installed for microphones and speakers uh, will show up on, this, on these lists. Just choose the one you wanna use. You can test it. Uh, and then there's some other settings down here. You can enable stereo sound. You can uh, set yourself up so that you're auto so you are automatically mute yourself when you join a meeting, which is very uh, uh, handy. Uh, even the host may want to mute you. You have your own reasons for wanting to mute yourself. If you're eating, drinking, talking to people as you're, uh, as you're uh, joining the meeting, uh, muting yourself kind of uh, protects you from any embarrassing circumstances as you're getting going. And then there's some other, uh, Configuration also, uh, you know, audio, video are the two most important. Screen sharing. Um, you can uh, enable, you know, when I, uh, when I turn my screen sharing on, and you're, uh, whether you, if you, even if you had the Zoom window not full screen, it probably went full screen on you. Um, I don't know how uh, Andre set this up, but this is how this is set up, is that when somebody shares a screen, it goes into full screen mode for folks. So you can get the maximum, uh, maximum display real estate. Virtual backgrounds, everybody's, everybody's playing around with these these days. Uh, and I can't, I don't uh, join a, a family or friends uh, Zoom happy hour without uh, somebody being able to, uh, to change their uh, background to something fun. So it's just another, uh, another way to, to lighten the mood and have fun while you're doing that, uh, taking care of business. Sometimes it's not always appropriate, not always appropriate. Uh, sometimes, I mean, it doesn't have to be fun or jokey. You can set up a background that, uh, you know, we're all outdoorsy people, public lands advocates. Uh, you know, it, it might, especially if, since we're uh, uh, all indoors, but maybe you want to talk about the outdoors, you can put a uh, picture, a nice picture of the lands that you help steward uh, and fight for uh, in back of you. So there aren't uh, just a jokey or, uh, or fun uh, reasons to use the virtual background. Uh, it could just set the mood for the meeting that you're in. Anyways, um, yeah, video and audio, very important to set those up. I'd also encourage uh, as you send out invites for meetings, again, uh, it'd be worth maybe reading the room, uh, knowing who, uh, if, it's, you know, if it's gonna be your board of directors, um, uh, there's a board meeting, you can put in some extra instructions in, the, uh, in your invite to, hey, maybe, you know, log in, uh, log in 10 minutes in advance or, Download Zoom and, and have asked them to make sure their audio and video is working before they actually join the meeting. Totally appropriate to do that. If you're doing a presentation to a to hundred people, that's uh, you can, but it's uh, you're going to be dealing with uh, with there's you know more circumstances. There could be people dialing in. There could be people 
that are, uh, um, so a lot of people don't read the invites. They just click on the link. So um, it's up to you, but these options are available to you. It's also options for recording uh, the webinars. So when you hold a meeting, you can, like Andres is doing right now, you can record uh, the action. Uh, you, so you set this up uh, so you can, this just, you know, show some of the options. You can uh, actually record, hit the record somewhere else. This uh, shows you some uh, things that uh, can manage that. Alrighty, so once you know, uh, I think somebody had a question. We can pause here. If there's a, uh, where is that? Ah, Barbara's asking, how do you set up a green screen? Uh, that is, okay, so virtual backgrounds. If you turn on this virtual background, I won't spend a lot of time on this. This is kind of a little extra. This isn't exactly 101, but I can uh, talk about this pretty quickly. Uh, that, the way that virtual background works is Zoom recommends that you have a blank uh, screen in back of you. The busier your background is, if you're sitting in front of a bookshelf, uh, that virtual background is less likely to show up clearly. Uh, it sort of relies, it does the job of a, it does, it, it treats any plain background like a green screen. As long as it can mask out a, a color or a simple pattern, then your background will show through. That's why if you may see, you can tell that people are in front of a, a virtual background if they're wearing glasses, part of the parts of the background that are near their frames will, will be shown. Uh, or maybe parts of their, uh, if they hold up a drink, you can see the background through the drink. You know, things like that, the, the busier the background is, the less likely that virtual background is going to work. Uh, that said, you can set up uh, a green screen. You can actually buy a green screen from, a, from Amazon. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive and drape it in back of you. But if, you, if you're using Zoom specifically, uh, any plain colored background would work. Uh, it doesn't have to be green. It can be, as long as it is, isn't, isn't very busy, very noisy, they usually work pretty well. Uh, let's see, what does mirror my video doer mean? Okay, so if you're looking at your webcam settings, uh, you'll notice that, so I am uh, looking towards the camera and I'm raising my right hand. And uh, right now, when I look at myself in the, in the, in the in, uh, when I look at my video, uh, it's the, the wrong hand is up. Uh, yeah, typically, uh, when, uh, when you're, um, let's see, how do I put this? A lot of webcams will flip the image. So I'm holding up the, my right hand. Uh, I, I went ahead and set the setting so that you can see that I'm holding up my right hand. But if it wasn't mirrored, uh, it would look to you like I'm holding up my left hand because it's, it's like a mirror mode. You can set a mirror mode so that if I hold it, if you hold up your right hand in you, to your own view, if you look at uh, yourself in the webcam view, it's gonna look like you're holding up your left hand. Um, this comes into play if, uh, if you have something, if you have a background, some webcams will flip the image by default. Uh, so if there's wording in back of you, uh, it will look reversed. So you can uh, flip a mirror mode to, you know, flip your point of, flip the webcam's point of view and wording will, uh, will be readable. All right, we're gonna press on here and uh, schedule a meeting. So we've set up our audio and video. Uh, there's a couple different things we can do. We can start a, a meeting right away if we wanted to, uh, an ad hoc meeting. But a lot of us are going to probably going to be scheduling something. Uh, I'll go over this real quick. Just click on schedule. Uh, we, we, we all uh, deal with uh, uh, calendars, I'm sure, so I won't spend a lot of time on this, but you can just uh, create, uh, we'll just say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm setting up. I know how to spell Friends of Sloan Canyon. There we go. Set up our next board meeting for whatever the date is and the time, the duration. Um, about the duration, something I, you know, I, I totally skipped over the uh, yeah, signing up uh, with the free, with the free plan gets you. Uh, if you uh, decide to use Zoom or host a meeting without uh, subscribing to the service, uh, you're limited to uh, 40 minutes of meeting time. Uh, if you, you know, which is enough time for folks to do uh, ad hoc meetings, even to do a presentation, if you want to do some kind of community outreach or something like that, or even have a, a board meeting, uh, my board meetings go on, or, or even our level rad tech group, our board meetings go on for a couple hours. So uh, maybe that's uh, not practical. But uh, 40 minutes is enough time to, to uh, give you an idea whether the service is useful to you. Um, so 
you know, it's worth playing around if you figure out that Zoom is the tool for you and, and, and you know, you'd want to facilitate more online meetings or online presentations. It's like 15 bucks a month, something like that. Uh, it's, uh, and that gives you unlimited uh, talk time or nearly, you know, effectively unlimited um, meeting time. I think it's 24 hours. You can conceivably have a meeting that's 24 hours long but before it cuts you off. Uh, which is actually not so unheard of. Uh, quick digression, I, the last company I worked for before I worked for uh, uh, the uh, organization I work for now, Southern Nevada Conservancy, uh, that startup, that Australian startup, uh, all of my bosses and a lot of my coworkers were in Sydney, Australia. So we would actually keep uh, Zoom on, uh, the special Zoom account on with uh, us, uh, you know, with a webcam on our open office environment. And uh, the folks in Sydney would do the same. So there is even, you know, even in these isolation times when uh, if you want to uh, talk to your, your grand folks or another party, but maybe you don't you can't afford to sit down and look at each other face to face. I know a lot of people that just turn their webcam on, uh, activate, you know, start to start a meeting and just go about their day. And if they have a question uh, for someone in the other on the other space, they just you know lean into the webcam, ask the question, hail people down, and uh, and and folks congregate and have that meeting, sort of like a virtual version of uh, water cooler talk or something. Who knows? Ah, scheduling a meeting. <laughs> so uh, uh, very similar to you know creating a uh, an appointment in a calendar. Uh, when, where, uh, require a meeting password. I would you know again, I wouldn't unless you're dealing with just a few people, a few reliable people, and or the uh, login link isn't going to be distributed widely. I would highly recommend uh, uh, creating a password. And then you can set you know on a on a meeting by meeting basis, you can set uh, whether uh, video is on or off for yourself or participants, whether um, how people can connect with audio. Uh, these uh, Zoom and other video conferencing systems, they make it pretty easy. You can either uh, connect with your computer, like a lot of us are doing right now, uh, or you can uh, dial in for folks maybe that uh, are on the road or won't be in front of a laptop uh, or don't have good audio uh, connected to their computer, they can just dial in. Uh, if this is if this setting is chosen, telephone or telephone and computer, uh, when you send out invites, as I'm sure, uh, uh, I think Andres' invite had the uh, click to join the Zoom meeting, but then beneath it, it said, okay, if you just want to dial in, here are some good numbers to use. So good options there, especially folks, uh, organizations like ours, a lot of our boards, a lot of our collaborators are maybe a little older uh, or don't use technology a lot or both. And uh, the telephone option is a good option. And then calendar. So if I uh, uh, sign up for uh, uh, this meeting, or if I send that invites, you can uh, send out uh, calendar uh, snippets as well, an ICS file for Outlook, or uh, add it to my Google Calendar, or add it to another calendar, Yahoo Calendar or something. I don't know. So I'm going to create a meeting for my board meets on the third Thursday of the month at 9 a.m. We'll just set it for two hours. This is just a part of the invite. Uh, the, the meeting doesn't have to last two hours. It doesn't have to, you know, you can, and you can start at any time. You can, you can start the meeting before 9 a.m. This is just a milestone, a calendar invite. Scheduling and done. And it may take a moment. Let me uh, quit Zoom real quick and then start it back up and that new meeting should be there. Oh, oops. No, interesting. Maybe it can only do one at a time. Yeah, this used to show uh, this used to show stacked uh, versions of uh, if you had more than one meeting set up, it would sort of stack them uh, back in the day. Maybe they're just showing uh, you know this the software changes all the time. So uh, especially in light, in light of its profit popularity, so they're probably just showing you the next one that's due. Let's see. I'm checking for questions real quick. Uh, Lauren asks, if you schedule a meeting, 
You said it is an invite. Does it go out to anyone besides yourself? If so, how do you set who it goes to? Uh, if you, uh, this, and inside the client, if you schedule a meeting, uh, you can uh, generate an invite. So actually I already scheduled this area 51 meeting. I can click on this here and say, okay, copy the invitation and then send it over whatever email system you uh, currently use. Uh, when you schedule a meeting inside of the, on the web interface, so I'm still logged in, right? Okay. We can schedule a meeting inside of the web interface also. And I think, used to be able to, uh, to uh, send the participants, I believe. I know you can specify alternate hosts, so for the purposes of this meeting, Andres made me a co-host. You can, you can do that. You can say, okay, I'm gonna be, there's somebody that's gonna be helping me. I'm gonna be the host. I need a co-host. You can put their email address in also. That way when they um, uh, log in to the meeting, they'll automatically be made a host or they can start the meeting without you if necessary. Um, looks like, uh, okay, there's the board meeting. Looks like for the time being, uh, you wanna copy the invitation and then send it, um, via your own email system. That is scheduling. Uh, you can also just start a meeting ad hoc. If you're talking to somebody on the phone and wanna uh, share some information or hop on and, and just do a, a teleconference, you can start a meeting right away. I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself so that uh, the feedback doesn't get uh, strange since I'm sitting here next to two computers. Alrighty, so this is the hosting interface. It's a little different than you'll notice the interface you have right now. You have a black bar. It could be uh, uh, on the bottom of the screen, or if you've gone full screen, it could be floating, I think, uh, in the middle of the screen or near the bottom. Uh, some things you can, uh, some things to pay attention to as the host, I have access to some of the, uh, uh, you know, all of the options that you do, plus a few more. Um, I can start and stop my audio or mute myself if need be. Uh, I can, you know, choose a different mic if, if uh, for some reason I was in a meeting a couple weeks ago where my earbuds, the power went out. And so I needed to, nobody could hear me anymore. So I had to go in here and switch to the laptop, to the onboard microphone. Uh, not a problem. You can do this sort of thing on the fly. Uh, you can uh, do all the testing, everything like that. It's a little inconvenient in the middle of a meeting, but worse comes to worse you can go ahead and make those changes. You can also do the same thing with a uh, video. I can stop my video if I want. Uh, if I need to take a personal moment or somebody uh, come comes in and needs my attention, uh, I can pause, I can mute myself, turn off the video. It doesn't end the meeting, even as the host, it just turns off those channels. Uh, I can also choose a different camera if need be. If, again, if this camera, if I have a webcam, if it's, uh, Pressing out on me or something like that, I can choose another uh, webcam. Or I can go in here and uh, change the settings. Here's a uh, widescreen view. If I check an original view, it kind of shrinks it down a little more. More of a four by three aspect ratio or more of its, uh, more of the webcam's native resolution. I can enable uh, high definition. So that uh, makes it uh, a little crisper, it brings it back out to widescreen. There's that mirror option. So you can see if I check it, it just flips the, it flips the screen. Not necessary, again, unless there's like text in the back that uh, nobody can read, then you wanna flip it so that people can read that text or your name badge or uh, you know, something on your hat. Um, even, if, even, if that, even if reading that wor those words aren't necessary to make the presentation happen, uh, they can be distracting for people. So if people are looking at you or looking at a presenter and they see words that are flipped, uh, they, they, may, they tend to focus on that kind of thing and, it's, and it tends to be distracting. Uh, so you wanna you know, take away as many distractions as possible. Uh, touch up my appearance. Uh, if anybody is used to uh, editing photos on their phone and there's a glow mode or a glamor mode, this does a little bit of that. It kind of uh, takes away some of the wrinkles. Yeah, oh my gosh, I have so many wrinkles now. Glow, glow mode doesn't help. Okay, whatever. So uh, yeah, it just sort of makes it makes the picture just blurry enough or just glamour shoddy enough to uh, 
to uh, make it look, look a little better. And then some other things also, I can uh, set it to turn off the, the video when joining a meeting. Again, for privacy reasons, maybe you don't want to put yourself, uh, uh, and sometimes it takes a couple, couple seconds to join a meeting. If you're drinking or some kind of activity, you don't want people to see that, then you can control when people see your video. All right, there's also a mode that says, hey, you know what, if there's 49 people on the call, I want to see all 49 faces at the ultimate Brady Bunch mode. Cool. All right, some hosting um, interface elements. Uh, this is brand new. So you may not have this on your version of uh, Zoom. This is, they updated the software just this morning to put security features uh, front and center. The security features that I mentioned before uh, and that you know would help keep uh, bad actors or rascals, kids with uh, too much time on their hands from uh, breaking in and, and wreaking havoc with your meeting. Uh, so I'm gonna click on the security button and these things that I mentioned before are kind of right front and center now. Uh, allow participants to share your screen. Uh, right now, I, so I went ahead and turned that off before. So uh, I, I think I changed that. And so by default, when I start a meeting, that's gonna be uh, deactivated. Uh, uh, participants, if they log into this new meeting, uh, can chat. They can rename themselves, and they're going to be in a waiting room. There's also this interesting feature called uh, locking a meeting. So after everybody has entered the meeting, if you know that everybody is there that needs to be there and you can proceed, you can go ahead and lock the meeting so that nobody else can join in. Even if they have the meeting ID, even if they have the password, they will not be able to enter, which is a very handy feature these days, uh, considering uh, the Zoom bombing and all the nonsense that's happening uh, with the meetings being disrupted. Uh, managing participants. So let's see. For this, I'm going to actually, this is the part where uh, that's the reason why I scheduled that area 51 meetings. I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. This one. So this will have a participant. There we go. I'm the only person right now. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself just because I'm on more than one. Uh, present uh, meeting at a time and somebody comes in, right? Somebody's coming in. Come on, participant. Okay, that didn't happen. Give me a moment and I'm going to uh, join this meeting. Well, here, I'll go, through the, I'll go through the other items. Actually, I'm gonna do this right now. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to mention that, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but these days, all of my emails uh, are starting to sound like I'm a World War, I'm a, you know, a Civil War soldier, you know, emailing mom and dad back home. Um, I said my salutation has started with I, you know, something along the lines of, I hope your family, I hope your team are doing well. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. I feel like a Civil War soldier now. Again, weird times we live in. I had this all set up and everything. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. So if you have a waiting room set up, this is what's gonna. This is what it's gonna look like. Um, this person is not in the meeting yet. The person is in the waiting room. They're gonna see that same screen that you saw for about ten minutes while we were kind of working out, letting people in. Um, but you'll get an, as a, as the host, you're gonna get a, a meeting, a, a notice that says, "Ah, there's one person waiting to enter the room." You can send them a message that says, "Hey, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, hang on a minute. We're just getting started." Or if you are expecting them, you can admit them. If you're not expecting them and you really doesn't, doesn't look like a party that you know, you can remove them also. Oh, there we go. Hi, Nebulon. Cool. So I've got a participant, such as he is. Um, I think by default, I had uh, the 
um, this person's muted. You can tell it's muted because there's no, or actually their audio is turned off right now uh, because there's no, keeps on covering up, there's no microphone uh, symbol next to the participant's name. Uh, if you, as a participant, I think you can see that also. If you click on the participants tab and you can, uh, you might be able to see everybody who's in the meeting and you can tell who, uh, might be able to tell who has their audio and video on and off. Hopefully you're, uh, uh, or, you know, not hopefully, pardon me, we're had, there's a lot of people in the room. So the way Andres set it up, I think he muted everybody. So even though there's a, uh, uh, even though you may have a microphone icon here, there's a slash through it to indicate that you're currently muted. Uh, let's see. Uh, if, uh, as Andres mentioned before, if uh, even though Nebulon here is um, uh, participating, and I'm, uh, we're talking, if I, he wants to, uh, if he has a question or wants my attention, he can raise his hand. And that's what it looks like to the host. Uh, so Nebulon's like, hey, 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 I've got a question, man, shut up. I've got to, I, let's, 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 uh, I need to talk to you about something. Um, the little hand uh, gets raised, I can see that. I can say, okay, you know, I could, un, you know, if, if, uh, if this is a Q&A, if this is a video presentation, an online presentation, this is a great way to accept, uh, to do Q and A is have people raise their hand. I can acknowledge that by lowering his hand and then unmuting him and, uh, you know, allowing the, the dialogue to occur. Um, for each participant also, there's a more button. You can control things that other, you know, their participation. Uh, you can make them the host if you want. You can put them back in a waiting room. If, uh, if you need to maybe do a breakout or, uh, Maybe it looked like you're going to start the presentation, but you need to do a little more setup or private time with the presenter. You can put folks back in the waiting room if you like. Um, if Nebulon is being rowdy, uh, if uh, even though if I know him, if he's not exactly Zoom bombing, but uh, it's not appropriate for Nebulon to be in the meeting anymore, I can remove him from the meeting. Uh, something to keep in mind is if you remove someone from a meeting, they cannot rejoin again. Even though they have the password, even though they have the ID, uh, that's sort of going to block them from the meeting. So you want to be judicious with how you use remove. If uh, Nebulon is being a real jerk, he's out of there. Uh, no, don't let him back in the meeting. You'll see him afterwards. Um, if uh, somebody has uh, named themselves something jokey or inappropriate, I've been known to do that myself, being a little jokey, uh, you can you know what you can say you know what come on Fred, we all know your name is Fred, don't don't be a jerk about it, and uh, and rename them, and that and their name will. Everybody will see their name as, as whatever you set it to. They can also rename themselves if you allow them to. By default, I think people can rename themselves. Uh, this comes in handy. Uh, that, that comes in handy for participants. Sometimes there's multiple people using one Zoom account, so uh, they may uh, join the meeting as a colleague, and they need to take a moment and uh, let folks know that it's actually them in the room. Uh, from this participants list, you can they've uh, moved this again. This might be a little different. On your uh, on your version of Zoom, but the uh, invite uh, button has been moved from the big black bar to uh, nope, pardon me, from the big black bar into the participants window. So you'd have to uh, click to bring up the participants, and then you can invite people from there. If there's somebody else we want to uh, have join the webinar, click on invite. And we can either just copy the URL, just copy the, uh, I'm going to copy that. And this is what it looks like. I just paste it in here real quick. Yeah. When you click on copy URL, that's going to give you the Zoom Connect, the Zoom ID, so the Connect link plus a hashed version, a, a nerdy uh, encrypted version of the password. So that they're not going to, anybody that receives this website address as it is right now, will not need to enter the password to get into the Zoom meeting. So again, this is a security issue, potential security issue. You want to hand, just want to, you want to use a uh, hand up this URL judiciously, be mindful of who you're giving it to. Uh, somebody can forward this to somebody who's maybe uh, into a little uh, uh, prankster and, and they will bypass your security to get in. So something to keep in mind. Uh, you can also just copy the entire invitation, similar to what you received in an email here a couple uh, uh, oh, an hour or two ago, which has the whole, you know, here's the, uh, 
here's the time and the date, here's the topic, here's the link, uh, here are the alternate, uh, if you just want to dial in by phone, here are the numbers you can use, uh, that kind of thing. You also have uh, in the invite, here's the uh, display of the meeting ID uh, on the top uh, of the title bar and then down here, the password. So if you're just on the phone with somebody, you can just tell them, hey, okay, here's the meeting ID, here's the password, boom, done and done. Um, while everybody, as people are filing in, if you forgot to, if you need to mute them upon entry, but you forgot to do the setting, you can go ahead and mute everybody at one time. Uh, Fred, you are muted. And then after you click on that, you can say, okay, they can unmute themselves if they want, uh, or if you check uncheck that, then they are muted until you unmute them. And uh, similarly, you can unmute them all and ask at the same time. Uh, that's just, you know, the more people that are involved in these Zoom meetings, that's just good crowd control. Uh, so rather than folks kind of step over each other, I mean, if it's appropriate to make it a cocktail party, you know, before the meeting gets started, cool. Uh, if you need uh, to structure it a little differently and control the room a little more, you've got these, uh, you've got the ability to mute everybody or unmute everybody. And this little uh, ellipsis icon here just gives you a few more things to do. Uh, you can, uh, you know, as pe before people start coming in, if you forgot to set uh, set up the meeting on uh, with these uh, parameters, you can go ahead and do so now. And so, oh, you know what? I do want to mute everybody as they enter. Uh, I do want to allow folks to unmute themselves though, if necessary. You can also play a chime so that if, uh, if you're busy talking to folks, Zoom will do that little uh, ding dong chime to let you know that somebody is, uh, is entering. And then from here, you can lock the meeting as well. So if enough folks are in, uh, you can lock it from the security uh, button or you can lock it from the participants area and say, you know what, everybody who's in, that's all the people I want in. Pausing for some questions. Anybody have a question at this time? Hey. Hey, uh, Jim, we had a, a couple questions. I can go ahead and curate these and you can answer. Um, cool. A couple people had questions about invites. Um, and I think one related to the way that I invited for this one, um, Barbara had asked, is, is that what Andres did for this webinar, copy and paste the invitation and send it out? And something that I did for this particular webinar, because I, uh, it's in my interest with uh, the Grassroots Advancement Program to collect email addresses to see who's attending them, is I actually set it up to where, if you remember, you had to register by giving your first and last name um, the organization you work for and your email address. And that helps me keep track of who attends these webinars. And I set all those settings myself. Um, those aren't necessary. Um, the, other side of, the other side of the spectrum of that is that these webinars do not require registration and all you have to do is click on the link at the assigned time to join the webinar. Um, maybe at some point we can go back to a screen share of what that looks like, um, but yeah. again, um, what I did for the email that you received is I went to the screen that had the um, the meeting that the webinar that was about to happen, and I copied the registration invitation, and I just pasted it as a hyperlink into the invitation that you received in your email. That way, everything looked the same. Um, we can I'm doing go back that and look at that. Oh, there we go. I'm doing that right now, actually. So I'll. Uh... Go over this again. So what I did is I went to the participants tab, uh, or once you update your software, if you don't see it this way already, once you update your software, this is where it will be. You can uh, click on the invite. You can send an email right from here if you like. Um, this used to default to this view, so I just figured I actually didn't notice that. It, now it's defaulting to this context view. So you can say, okay, I want to send an email to a bunch of folks. I want to send it via Gmail, Yahoo, or you can just copy the invitation. Uh, I tend to just copy that way. I hate other, personally, I don't like uh, apps like this sort of controlling my uh, other tools. Who knows what else they're doing? I'm a little paranoid like that. Me and Fred are, you know, I, I know enough about tech to be paranoid. Just because, uh, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Right, Fred? Anyways, but this is what it looks like in... Uh, I'm going to maximize this a little bit so we can see the entire invite. So if I paste this in, now the invite, okay, I think I did this a little bare bones. Typically it's a little healthier, a little more robust. It has more information. 
Usually it has the date and the time up top uh, and then the Zoom meeting information. And then uh, I may have turned for this meeting, I may have turned uh, said just computer audio. If you uh, uh, allow for telephone connections, it'll include all sorts of, uh, you know, had a, a phone numbers to use across the country, depending on what kind of what side of the country you're on, uh, possible telephone numbers to use and, uh, and other instructions. It looks a lot more like the uh, like Andres's email from uh, you know, the reminder email. And feel free to play around with it yourself. You don't have to, again, you, you saw me before I started the meeting. You can hold a meeting with yourself. You can, if you want to play around with the host tools. You can start a meeting. You don't have to in, invite anybody. Um, you can just start a meeting. Your um, video image will come up. Um, you can you know, see yourself and uh, what you look like in the webcam. And you can play around with the host interface. Um, invite people, see what the invites look like. Um, you know, invite your friends and family. You know, maybe you host the next, uh, somebody else has been hosting, another friend or family has been hosting a uh, Zoom uh, coffee hour or you know, catch up family time. Uh, maybe you offer to host and be the host next time and, and be familiar and that gives you some a little bit of uh, consequence free experience using uh, these hosting tools. Alrighty, and then chat, as we may have seen in chat, uh, there's the chat button down here for the host. I think you guys have this as well, where it brings up the, uh, the sidebar for chat and you can uh, communicate with your participants or communicate with the host. A couple of different ways you can, a couple of different options you have that people may not be paying attention to is you can elect to send a message to everybody who's participating, or you can just send a message to another participant. So if I just want to talk to Fred while this is going on, um, you know, and, and so that nobody else can see this chat, I can send a chat directly to Fred. If I was, uh, if I'm just a participant and not the host, I think there's an option to send a, any, uh, a chat just to the host as well. Okay, how are we on time? Oh, we got to start a little bit, okay. I thought I'd go through this in about 30 minutes. I'm going through it in a normal period of time. I guess I haven't drinking that much coffee. Screen sharing, this is the, um, and I'm cognizant that I think we have, uh, it's slated until 12.30, so I'll keep that in mind. Um, I'll make sure we get out of here by 12.30. Uh, unless, you know, if folks wanna stick around, um, say so in chat, I'd be happy to stick around for uh, an extra period of time, answer questions. If we run out of time, I'd be happy to answer questions afterwards. Uh, screen sharing, okay, so um, if I want to, uh, share a PowerPoint, which is very common. Uh, share, I can, there's different screen elements I can share. I'm gonna click on the screen sharing uh, button here and it shows you what you can do. Uh, I can share my entire desktop with somebody. Uh, be careful with that because I kind of cleaned off my uh, desktop for uh, this presentation, but typically I have icons. I, I become that person. I have icons galore on my uh, desktop. Uh, working files, things like that. If I, um, if you share your screen, everybody's going to see those files. So it may be inconsequential depending on what you're working on, or there could be some things in here that might be a little awkward. Um, links to agreements, links to chat. I, I don't know financial information. Who knows? If you're, uh, if you don't want people seeing what's on your desktop, I wouldn't uh, share your entire screen unless you deal with those uh, with those um, files first. Another option would be to just uh, if there's an app you want to show, you can elect to just share the app itself. So I'm going to just uh, share the web browser here. Ooh. From a host side, this is what it looks like when you share something. It's a big green uh, outline will appear around it. That way you get a visual clue for what's being shared. If you're sharing your entire desktop, that green uh, outline is gonna be around the whole thing. Uh, if you're just sharing a um, app window, then it'll just be shown around the app window. Uh, it may look a little weird. I'm not gonna do this a lot because I'm not sure sometimes it uh, messes people's clients up, but uh, you can uh, alter the size of the window even when it's shared, you're gonna see your view. It may look a little herky-jerky, but you'll see the, the uh, you should see, or the participant, Fred, will see um, 
if, if, if this screen share is uh, showing up full screen on their, on their computers, uh, it may get a little herky-jerky and the size of the window may change a little bit. It may blow up if I make it smaller or get uh, uh, smaller if I make it larger. Uh, if I need to pause something, and, and this is, you can, uh, you can share uh, YouTube videos, you can share, it doesn't just have to be static you know, pictures or static items. You can play a YouTube video for someone if you'd like. Uh, you can, you know, share pretty much anything. Uh, graphic on here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Pause it and we'll share something else real quick. Here's, uh, there's that Word document that I pasted the invite into. Again, that's what it looks like. I keep on forgetting that you guys aren't seeing the screen share. I'm, this is the, this is the test. <laughs> this is a test uh, meeting. Uh, but again, this is what it looks like to the host view. Uh, you should be able to pause also. If you, if I minimize this uh, window, it's going to pause, it's gonna say, okay, the screen sharing has been paused. The thing you're trying to share with people is no longer on the screen. Um, so people, I think, just go back to seeing uh, your face, your webcam. But it sort of tells you, it sort of gives you a visual highlight in yellow. Oh, okay, it's paused. You can uh, st uh, stop the sharing from there. Or if you click on this, I think it will un... Nope, you have to bring it back up from the taskbar. What did I do? There we go. So I brought the uh, app I'm, I'm uh, sharing, I brought it back up from the taskbar and it's sharing it once again. This looks weird to me because I am uh, I have a Zoom meeting inside of a Zoom meeting and I was doing a share inside of a share. It was getting a little inception on me. No matter how many times I uh, I've done this I've done this how to use Zoom a few times and uh, and it uh, still it still trips me up once in a while. Alrighty, as uh, you can you can also it's just to put a cap on the screen sharing you can give other folks the ability to do this. You can say okay. One person at a time can share it, or if, if you're in party mode, if you're in that Brady Bunch mode where you can see everybody's screens, you can allow everybody to share something from their desktop. And uh, all it really does is it switches uh, your view of them from, uh, from the webcam to whatever they're sharing. Again, just be judicious. The more people are involved in the meeting, the more chance for shenanigans to happen or for something unexpected to happen. You know, and I guess that's a better way to put it. If you're hosting a meeting, it doesn't have to be necessarily shenanigans or bad actors, uh, but if you want to make sure the meeting happens smoothly and there is no awkwardness, um, you're just, that's what you're doing is you're managing, you're trying to lower the chance of, of something awkward happening by sort of controlling who can do what and when. Okay, uh, recording. So Andres, before, uh, as he started talking, you may have seen a little uh, note in the corner that said that this is recording. Uh, this is how you do that. So from the, again, from the host interface, I can just hit record right now. And uh, let's see if I record inside of a record in this computer. Okay, so there's two options. You can just re, uh, you can record to the computer, you can record to the cloud. Uh, if you're recording to the computer, the end result will show up on your, I think in your download on your desktop or on your downloads folder, something like that, or in a Zoom folder, you'll get a uh, MP4, I think video or a QuickTime video, I forget which, uh, that ends up uh, on your computer somewhere. Uh, either when you end the meeting or when you quit recording. There we go. I went ahead and started recording. I can pause the recording at any time or I can stop the recording. There's a little recording notice you may have mentioned uh, when Andres uh, began doing this. Oh, it looks like I can uh, pause it and stop it from uh, here as well. Interesting. Again, this app uh, changes <laughs> all the time. Alrighty, so I can pause it. And again, there's a nice visual clue that uh, Zoom is very good about uh, telling you what state it's in uh, to help you manage, uh, manage the meetings. So it's paused, I can go ahead and play it again and start recording. And then when I'm done, I can stop. The recording file will be converted to MP4 when the meeting ends. There we go. So once I end the meeting, it will kill it and uh, it'll, it'll cap the, the video and uh, Load it. I think. I think actually. I think about it. It puts it in the Zoom folder. Uh, reactions. Um, 
this is something that, you know, it's just a little visual clue for people. People are used to emojis now. They're used to clapping for someone or giving a thumbs up. This is just another way inside of a meeting to allow someone to, uh, to provide a virtual thumbs up. That's what it looks like. I think it shows up in a, there we go. It will show up to me in my screen. So, oh, that person approves. Cool. And it goes away. Good. Okay. I think I'm, I think I'm old enough not to, I don't do a lot of clapping. I do more thumbs up than clapping. People uh, clap a lot these days. And I don't, uh, don't know why. Okay. Ooh, that's next. That's, that's outside of 101. So more, um, there's different things you can do with Zoom. You can stream to Facebook or YouTube. Um, I'll save that for another time or afterwards. If uh, you guys have questions, I can uh, fill you in on that. I'm actually going to be doing a um, uh, presentation tonight. Friends of Sloan is hosting a wildlife biologist from the Nevada Department of Wildlife who's going to be talking about desert bighorn sheep and water guzzlers. And this is how we're going to be doing it. Is we're going to be, uh, uh, it's a little more advanced uh, setup, but uh, pretty much uh, me, uh, me as the host and the biologists are going to be on Zoom and then we're going to stream our conversation or Zoom meeting to the world rather than everybody kind of jumping in Zoom and, and the potential for havoc. Linda, Linda's raising her hand. Andres, can you see, uh, or uh, Linda, if you want to put your question in chat. While that's happening, let's see, I will, uh, what's more, what's, oh yes, uh, views. You can change your view just uh, you know, as a participant. Uh, you, you have this ability, you can change the, the way uh, you view everybody. Uh, right now, this is sort of on a um, speaker, whoever's um, uh, speaking is um, uh, showing up. Uh, the largest, <laughs> pardon me, I'm, I'm getting distracted, my words are failing me, uh, will show up a, a larger on the screen, or you can go into that Brady Bunch view, they call it gallery view. And whoever whoever's on the screen will show up uh, in different squares. I had this meeting set up so that up to 49 people can be displayed on here. Um, I don't know if I'd ever, I don't know if I'd ever put more than eight or 10 people uh, on my screen at one time with using this laptop. The more people are on the screen, the more chances that your computer might start melting. I don't know. That's a lot of people on the screen. Andres, I'll need some help with the question if there's uh, something being asked. Yeah, so uh, we have a couple questions in the queue. Um, cool. I'll go ahead and just uh, start chronologically. Um, question we got a little while ago earlier on um, to kind of shift gears a little bit as we think about the more meetings we're going to be scheduling and the more we're going to be using the software. Uh, Kayla had asked, since there are so many people using Zoom, you had mentioned the big uptick in users. Nowadays, is there an advantage to not starting a meeting on the hour or half hour? And I think that relates to the amount of people similar to like everybody logging on to Netflix at 8 p.m. to watch a show and it automatically slows down. Is there any advantage to staggering your starts or is the end result that the same amount of people are going to be on at some point during that hour? Like multiple meetings at one time? I think more along the lines of um, across the country, everybody starts a meeting at 2 p.m. So Zoom might crash versus creatively finding like a 115 time slot to start our meetings. They, uh, I, I've been watching, you know, the, the nerd in me has been watching the company and watching, sort of watching out for statistics like that and how, and performance issues in Zoom. So far, they've held up really well. I've been very surprised. Uh, again, they have, uh, there are a couple hundred million people using their service uh, these days and they've been able to uh, hold up. There's been uh, very little times, you know, they, they mentioned it in that uh, meeting setup area on the website. They mentioned, hey, we may be for free users, we may be delaying some services or degrading some services, which means that what that means to them is there maybe the audio won't be as, uh, the audio quality won't be as high or the video quality won't be as high. Uh, things like that, they're not, they're, I don't think they're ever, they don't have no intentions of locking you out at any time or, or keeping a meeting from happening. They just may lower the video resolution to help uh, take the strain off their servers to get that way, as many people as possible can meet at one time. But so far, no, I, the, the, the short bottom line answer to that is no, there's, there's no advantage I can see of right now to starting at a, at a weird staggered time. You can start at any time. 
I think the more limiting factor uh, for this would be your own bandwidth. So I'm doing this from the office right now rather than home because my office has a healthier internet connection. And um, at home, I still I, it's 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 good, but it's not it's not that good. I, I can I can plug right into a, a wired network and uh, and participate like this. Um, so I think maybe your home internet bandwidth is more of a limiting factor than the service itself. Awesome, thank you. Another question I had, um, and I think Linda had asked, how do we do reactions? Reactions were not on my Zoom screen. And I think reactions are probably in the latest update is my guess. Um, ah, yes. Um, I think if you update the latest Zoom update, you'll have that option. Um, the previous version didn't have it up front the way it is on the screen that Jim is sharing right now. It didn't have it up front. I think it had it in the participants area. You could, um, I'm, I'm not sure if Andres, if you uh, have updated yet, but it's uh, in the participants area, it might be something that happens there where you can, as a participant, you can say, hey, I want to give kudos or something like that. <laughs> it's, I guess maybe it's the crowds I'm in, uh, but uh, that's a feature I've rarely used. Perfect. A, a couple other questions. Um, Diane had said it was difficult to find chat the chat button with uh, Jim Stanger's screen view. And I was wondering about limiting feedback by muting yourself when others are speaking or unmuting. I think that's maybe two questions. Um, I think a good general practice is if you're not talking, even if you're the host and you've turned it over to somebody else, put yourself on mute. Um, it's really easy for background noise to feed through. And I think we're more conscious of any background noise if we're actively speaking. If you're sitting back, just go ahead and mute. It's gonna come in handy and it's gonna make the recordings especially a lot cleaner. Um, yes. Let's see, let's, uh, I'm gonna bounce around here. Um, somebody had asked when you were doing the reactions and the thumb up, um, Suzanne had asked, can you, you have participants indicate they want to do something or support or volunteer for something? You can use that thumbs up as a quick visual, um, but you won't be able to capture that data. And Jim, I don't Correct. know if now or maybe later we can jump into because our, our time is coming up at next Wednesday's chat. We can talk a little bit about that poll function, which I think only as hosts do we see the option to create a poll. But within um, Zoom, you can create a poll um, or a series of questions that people click on and answer live and the data is collected. So if you are collecting data from your participants asking, say, how many people do stewardship activities, you can find out, oh, X number of people on this call are engaged in stewardship currently. And that data is recorded on the follow-up on the back end of your Zoom call. Um, that's more of an exciting feature that maybe we'll talk about because it does take a little bit of setup. Yes. Um, there's also, uh, there's also, you can also do it in chat. I mean, you can ask for instant feedback with polls. Uh, nothing says you can't put maybe like a, if you want to poll even after the meeting is over, you can uh, include a, in chat, you can include a link to a survey monkey uh, survey or something like that. Something that persists or a Google form, a, a link to a Google form that asks people for their feedback even after the meeting ends. Um, Katya had a great question. I think something that a lot of us can maybe do at times. She asked, uh, can I stream a DVD documentary to members by sharing my screen via Zoom? Basically, the same could be said of Netflix or a video you have on your computer. Can you play a video and stream it through Zoom? And is there any um, anti-piracy concern or anything we should think about as we're, if we're doing that? Uh, let's see, answering those in order, yes, you can. Uh, you can, uh, you know, and this can be for anything from, uh, yeah, from doing something formal, showing a video to folks, or maybe just get together with friends and watching something on Netflix. So don't call Netflix, I told you that, but yeah, or, or YouTube, something like that. You can share video. There's actually a tool that helps you share video in that when you're in the share screen, and I'm going to start this over again. Uh, I went to the management interface, the host interface, and shared, I'm going to share my screen. Before I choose what I want to share, there's a button down here that says optimize screen sharing for video clip. And what this does is that if I share something like a YouTube video, it's only gonna share the YouTube video itself. Just that little, the little video part, not the whole page and the comments and the recommended everything else. It will just take that video stream 
and blow it up to full screen so that all people are looking at is just the video. Um, now that, uh, and then you can sort of exit out of that. You, if, if it went full screen on you, you can go to a, a window a mode. And then while you're watching that video, you can open up chat and have a uh, uh, back channel chat or, or you know, things like that, or talk over it. I think you be able, should be able to talk over the video as well if folks are unmuted. So yes, uh, as to the legality, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, if, if we're all watching a Utah Netflix stream, Netflix may have something to say about that. Uh, since we're in a private party, I'll leave it up to you and your ethical, you know, uh, parameters to, to figure out what's, what's right to do. I, uh, I've gotten together with some friends. We're going to go, we're going to watch a couple of silent films. We're going to go to archive.org and watch some uh, films, uh, you know, or show videos of each other. There's, there's a lot of innocent ways to use it, and there are a lot of nefarious ways to use it. All right, so um, we are coming up a couple more minutes till the hour and a half mark. Um, real quick though, Diane Rice, I think is engaged, excited about the Bighorn talk. So Jim, if you wanna send me a link to that, I will follow up this email with all the resources we talked about, but I will also send you an invite to the Bighorn talk if that's publicly available. I think it sure is. Folks have kids at home, it could be a great way to engage. Um, um, if, for, if for some reason yeah. the link doesn't come through, if you go to Facebook and search for Friends of Sloan Canyon, uh, the, it'll, it'll be a, it's right, it, the live video feed uh, should be front and center. If you go to the Friends of Sloan Canyon page, same thing for YouTube. Uh, we have a channel there. We have a couple, just a couple videos there at the moment. But if you search for Friends of Sloan Canyon, we have a channel on YouTube as well. And then if you go to the video tab, when we go live, that, that live video feed should be uh, the first thing they offer you. But yeah, I'll send a link to everybody. Awesome. Um, before I wrap things up, was there anything you wanted to add real quick here at the tail end, Jim? Uh, not the moment. I just wanted to, I guess the last thing to show everybody is ending the meeting. So you end the meeting, you can leave it yourself or you can uh, send a, uh, end it for everybody. I'm ending it for me and Fred. So don't, uh, don't, don't be afraid, Andres or everybody. I'm not killing the meeting. I'm just killing it between me and Fred and done. Oh, and now it's doing the recording. It's uh, doing the converting. That's it, there's your basic uh, Zoom 101. Thank you, Jim. I'm gonna be available Jim. for the next couple of uh, Wednesdays, as Andres mentioned, I'm gonna be available via Zoom, phone call. I'll, I'll provide some contact information for how to get a hold of me. I think it's between, it's at noon, uh, 11 to noon or noon to one. I forget noon what, to every one. Wednesday. Noon to one every, for the next couple of Wednesdays. Feel free to reach out to me for any questions uh, whatsoever about this. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thanks a ton. Thank you, everybody who joined us. Again, you'll get a follow-up email if you registered, whether you attended or not. Um, this will be on our website at, at the FGN portal. And really, just this is the beginning of us learning new software, new for some, old for others, but figuring out ways to engage and knowing that we can't be meeting face-to-face. -face. We can't be doing the things that we're used to doing. But like I said at the beginning, the work doesn't end. So this is a way to connect and keep up the good fight. Um, the next two Wednesdays, Jim will be available. You have that link in that email I sent you. If you have any questions between now and then, uh, feel free to reach out to myself directly. Um, I'm happy to start putting together more resources and make sure folks are as engaged as possible. I would say a good pro tip um, to get familiar with these tools is rewatch this webinar the recording if you have any questions, but set up a meeting with you and maybe two or three coworkers and set aside half an hour and just push every possible button. I know it seems silly, but that's how you're gonna learn. Get on with people who it's okay if they just get disconnected and they have to reconnect. Um, push all the buttons, figure out the settings and save the, that template as the settings for your basic meeting. That way all you have to do is copy a template as your basic meeting. We'll go over that a little bit more in detail later on, but please experiment with Zoom. Uh, and if you have any questions, reach out to both of us. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. Thanks everybody. Bye.